Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CCSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to secure software development in Domain 4 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the second of seven videos for Domain 4. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are a microscopic part of our complete CCSP masterclass. Secure software development, as the name implies, is all about how we integrate security into the software development process. It is incredibly important for security to be involved right from the start and throughout the entire system lifecycle so that applications provide the requisite confidentiality, integrity, and availability throughout their entire life. Sadly, security requirements are typically labeled as non-functional requirements. And when a development project is inevitably over budget and behind schedule, what are the first things management cuts? Non-functional requirements. Who needs those anyways? So when should security become involved in any development project? Right from the start and throughout the entire process. This concept of is often referred to as baking security in. It is significantly more expensive to try and retrofit and bolt security on later versus building it in from the start, baking it in. So let's define this system life cycle, the SLC, which is the overall life of a system from cradle to grave. And it encompasses the software development life cycle, the SDLC. The SLC includes planning, designing, development, testing, operations, maintenance, and eventual disposal of the system, the entire life cycle. So let's go through these pieces, starting with defining a plan for a project which includes what goals, what objectives will this project help the organization achieve? What are the high level cost estimates? Um, will you need to obtain management approval to proceed, etc.? The requirements analysis phase is where business requirements, user needs, the type of data to be collected, stored, processed, the business use of the system, etc., etc., are gathered and validated to create a set of detailed requirements. The software development lifecycle, as the name implies, focuses on the development phases. And let's go through those. The design phase involves translating requirements into a detailed design plan. The development phase is where the coding begins, writing code to create the system. There are many methodologies that have been developed over the years to guide the development process, and we'll cover just a few of those ones later on. Or actually, right now. Waterfall begins with a plan, then defining requirements, building, testing, and finally releasing. So it's a series of steps that you have to go through, and you have to go through in that order, just like water going down a, a hill. The defining characteristic of waterfall is that each of these phases are conducted one after another, and you can't go backwards. Water can only flow downhill. So if you discover as a part of your two-year waterfall project that you missed a requirement, you can't go back and redefine the requirements. You must proceed through build, test, and release, and then include the missed requirements as part of the next waterfall cycle. Agile was created to address this problem. Agile exactly follows the same phases as Waterfall, but does them typically in two-week sprints, rapidly iterating through plan, define, build, test, release, plan, define, build, rest, test, release. Waterfall is better suited for projects where no changes are planned, and Agile is better for, suited for projects where many changes are expected, where organizations want to rapidly iterate ideas and fail fast through rapid sprints. Agile includes the role of a scrum master. This person is a facilitator, and I'm intentionally emphasizing the word facilitator. A scrum master has no real authority over the team. They're not project managers, but rather they're to act as a coach to the team and facilitate communications with the organization to maximize the productivity of the team. And of course, the latest and debatably greatest software development methodology is DevOps. This is what all the cool kids are doing. DevOps, as the name implies, combines development, the dev part, quality assessment, and operations, the ops part, to significantly shorten the development lifecycle, possibly to the point of releasing code daily. DevOps includes automated practices such as continuous integration and continuous delivery. DevOps can seem contradictory to having security in the development process as Sacred security practices like segregation of duties between development and operations are intentionally removed. 
and many other traditional security techniques are just too slow to fit in the rapid iterations of DevOps. Therefore, integrating security into DevOps requires strong engagement between developers and security, using secure development frameworks, automating much of the security testing, and only using traditional security testing techniques like penetration testing very sparingly. CICD, which I mentioned earlier and we'll define now, stands for continuous integration, continuous delivery, or maybe continuous deployment. More on that in a moment. CICD is an approach that uses a lot of automation to speed up software delivery. Code is automatically committed to a repository, and then building and testing is automatically performed, and even pushing code automatically <laughs> can be done. You can see here that in this diagram that continuous integration means automating the upload of code to the repository, committing that code, and running through the build server to compile the code and run a bunch of automated tests. There are two versions of CD. Continuous delivery automates the review, user acceptance testings, but there's still a manual step required to move code into production. Continuous deployment automates everything including automatically moving code into production after all the testing has passed successfully. It is very important to test throughout the system lifecycle from validating business requirements, reviewing designs, testing units, unit testing, interfaces, integration, and a whole system testing during the development and operations. Deployment is the final stage of the software development lifecycle, and deployment is where we move a system into production. Operations is where the system is being actively used for business purposes. It is in operation. The disposal phase is extremely important and often overlooked. When a system is retired and replaced, there needs to be controls in place, security controls, to ensure data, logic, processes, etc. are migrated to the new system with integrity, data in the old system is retained as necessary, and if the old system and data are to be deleted, the data may need to be defensively destroyed and not just left on a hard drive and sold on eBay. <laughs> Array for privacy breaches. All right, and the final part of this mind map, the Cloud Security Alliance created three meta phases to describe the software development lifecycle. I'll be honest, I've never come across these in the real world, but I know they're on the exam, so let's cover them. Here are the three meta phases of software development in the cloud. Secure design and development is a phase that includes everything from training and developing organization-wide standards to actually writing and testing code. Secure deployment includes security and testing activities when moving code from an isolated development environment into production. And the third and final meta phase, secure operation, includes securing and maintaining production applications, including external defenses such as web application firewalls and ongoing vulnerability assessments. So, just remember those as being the three meta phases. Secure design and development, secure deployment, secure operations. All right, there you go. And that is an overview of secure software development within domain four, covering the most critical concepts you need to know for the exam. Mm -hmm.